Yeah, we on boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gonna talk. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's been a manipulation, and we we didn't went to sleep on it. Now things and got so bad. Yeah. It's just like the the gang culture. Piru is a culture. It's a street in Compton that just wasn't allowing dudes to just come in just because we live in houses with, with, with families. You can't take our coats. You can't take our shoes. We can fight too. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it was a defense mechanism and the defense mechanism went so bad we turned into the savages that we were fighting against. Wow. So now you can't tell the difference. Let me ask you this. You and uh, you and Melvin, y'all y'all roll together. Being a cat from Texas, you know, when you see that, you think about Crips and Bloods. How did you guys end up being, you know, uh, you know, being, you know, linking up and everything? Because mutually, Melvin has a, a, a genuine insight for in bettering black people. And I don't say I can in better anything. Henry, now say I, that because he's he formerly was Crip, you formerly was Blood. Ain't, yeah, he Crip. He, he's a Crip. I know I'm a Pyru. Pyru. It's different. Okay, I don't What's know the, the difference, difference between a Pyru and Blood. Bloods rule the streets of L.A. Pyru's the world. Mathematically, Pi R factor. <laughs> okay, so how do you guys end up linking together? How do you end up? Uh, uh, Captain Shahid had asked me to do a speaking engagement. I had seen, I guess, when Melvin first got out, he did a, a, a book sign. I guess, man, when was that first slave ship? 97 after I got out on it. Right. right. So I, I went down to this. I'm kind of black culture, you know, I'm still got the spirit. So uh, I go down there and, he was, and I bought one of his books. You know, I bought the book, came home and read it. Then, shoot, like. Five years, it was about five years ago, we met again at a, um, Inglewood High School to uh, uh, talk to some gang members. And we were talking, his, his partner brought him, I came with Captain Shahid, and we got to discussing and this and this and that. And I'm like, hey, bro, yeah, I, I know you. I said, man, I bought your book. Wow. And so that's, so we, you know. So y'all never seen each other or knew each other before that? No. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. No, it ain't crazy. He from I mean, LA. I'm from Compton. Okay, so y'all don't don't no. never cross. Paths. It's a big place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but okay, we Would have you, an age difference too. Correct. So when he was when when he started doing what he was doing, I was already in prison. Okay, I know some of the OG homeboys, and when he was like seven, eight, nine. Well, not seven, eight, nine, because he's. He started when he was like three, I think. He was kind of <laughs> badass. <laughs> so, <laughs> so at the end of the day, being that you guys represent two different uh, parts of, of the gangs, when people seen you guys together, when you would do different things together, did it help the, the gang culture in California? No. No, not at all? No. How do we, how, how can we, how do we make a better way, like the gap that you was talking about bridging, uh, for, you know, like when you came home and everything was kind of in a disarray, how do you, how do you pretty much uh, bridge those gaps for our youth, for the? Bro, I don't know. <laughs> don't get me the line. I can, because, yeah. I can tell you all That's these glass. Yeah. I can tell you all these uh, uh, poetic theories that I have. Yeah. But it's just like me and Melvin was talking earlier about these. It changed this intervention stuff. So we've been doing it, and uh, and then when you turn to intervention, th these nonprofits, when you do a nonprofit and it starts working, the government take it over and they start running your shit. Now you're just on a payroll. So now your whole complexion or intervention, we've been having intervention for 20 years, it ain't stopped no murders. Wow. You know, but we got some dudes doing like, you know, like I hear dudes talking about, yeah, if, Fuck big you, fuck this and this. And can you cuss on air? Um, you already did. Did I? No. <laughs> Go ahead, man. <laughs> so, but you looking at a dude, and, and, I, and I don't know you personally, but I know his work now. You know what I'm saying? The things that he's doing. And the things that he's doing, this dude, with his own money, took a hundred black kids that had never had suits or nothing but tennis shoes on, bought them tuxedos, Took them to dinner. They didn't know what a fork spoon was from a salad fork or this and that. 
He set them down and did something. Do you know how that impacted them mm -hmm. kids' life? You can give a nigga a book bag and this and that. Yo, give him some drawers and some socks. That's what he need. You know what I'm saying? So when you do uh, Roland Curtis, the 30s, the feds had to come get them because them dudes start buying houses in the neighborhood to keep the Mexicans from buying them. And they start having, to, you had a problem with them, they would have the crackheads come cut your lawn every Tuesday they would take out your trash. Now they became friends to the old people. Now the old people wasn't writing on them no more, so the LAPD had them all indicted and sent them to the feds. Mm. Wow. One of, one of, my, one of um, uh, um, Melvin's uh, OG homies, Michael Conception. Y'all probably heard of Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, got, he got the Michael Conception Foundation. So it's dudes that's doing stuff, you know, that ain't televised. So maybe we did come up doing some crazy stuff, but we had no guidance. Your mother wasn't able to give you $100,000 and let you, you had to do this by hands on, trial and error. We didn't know nothing about money. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.